Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add a timestamp tracking when a record was last updated in Microsoft Access. This is one I get asked all the time. How do I track when a record was last updated, whether it's a customer record, a product record, an order? When was the last time that anything in this record was updated? That could be important to know, right? For products, for example, right? We haven't gotten updated pricing from our vendor on this product in two months, okay? So in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Before we get started, you're gonna need one line of VBA code, one line, just one. I'm gonna show you what it is. But if you wanna learn how to program in VBA, go watch this, it's a free video, it's 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA. The one line of code is easy, knowing where to put it and what it's all about. Well, that's the, the harder part. That's what I cover in this video. It's free. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. There's a link. You'll find a link you can click on down below the video. While you're at it, go watch this video too if you have time. It's about the after update event. It's about how to have some bit of code run after another field is changed. So go watch this too if you, if you have time. If not, no big deal. Okay, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. Again, you'll find links down below. Here I got a customer form, and I want to know when any field in here is changed. Okay, so the first thing I need is a field to save that data in. We need to know when this record was last updated. So let's go to the customer table, design view. And if you don't know how to do this, customer design, all that stuff, go watch my Access Beginner 1 class. It's free, about four hours long. It's on my website and my YouTube channel as well. You'll find links to that down below too. Okay, so we need last updated and we'll make that a date time field. Now you can put a default value down here equals now. That'll put the current date and time in there when the record is created and only when the record is created. Okay, but that's not enough. That'll get us started. So save that, close it. And now if we go back in here, we have to add this to our form as well. All right, go to my form design tab, go to add existing fields. There's last updated now that we've added it to the table. Click and drag, we'll just drop it down here on the bottom. All right, and I'll make that bigger like so, and I'm gonna put a little space in there. And maybe we'll format paint this too. Let's go uh, click on this guy, go to the format painter, paint like that, okay? And now I wanna see a specific format of the date in here, okay? So I'm gonna go to format, and let's pick general date. That way I get the date and time. All right, save it. Let's close it, close it, open it back up again. Now notice there's nothing in there because these are existing records. But if I go to a blank new record, you can see there it is right there. That's the default value in a new record. Okay. Now, what I need though is anytime I change any one of these fields, I want that date updated to be updated, right? Now, if you watched my after update video, then you'll know that you can put an after update event in pretty much any one of these fields in here, right? So for example, let's say first name, double click on that. Okay. Go to events, go to after update. Now this happens after the data is changed and gets committed to the table. And if I hit dot, 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 all right, that brings up my VBA editor. Okay. And I can come in here and say last updated equals now, just like that. That's all you need. Last update equals now. That's in the first name after update event. Okay. So now if I come back here, let's close this. All right. If I come in here and change this from Richard to Rick and hit tab, boom, look at that. See that? It triggered the event after this field was updated. Okay. Now, I don't want to have to put that in every single field in here. Okay. That same event. So it'd be nice if I could do that on the form level and guess what there is. So let's go in here. Let's get rid of the after update for this field. Get rid of that delete. Okay. And let's come back over here and let's take a look at the form properties. Now there's an after update for the form right here. Now this happens when the entire form is updated. Any field on the form gets updated. All right. So let's try this one. Let's see if this works. Dot, dot, dot. Now we're in the form after update. All right. Again, let's put in here last updated equals now. Okay. Save it. Come back out here. 
Let's close it and reopen it. I always like to close and reopen forms when I'm working with code. Okay, let's go to a different record. And I'll try changing James to Jim and hit tab. Okay, didn't seem to work. That's because the after update event doesn't fire until the record gets saved to the table. That's when the after update event works. Okay, so let's move to a different record. Okay, the update worked, but I, it didn't move me to another record. What's going on here? Hold on, let's try to go to the previous record. No, that's not working either. Hmm, what's the problem? Here's the problem. If you put that in the after update event, all right, Access tries to save that record to the table, but in doing so, edits the record. And that causes some kind of a weird loop where it can't save it because it's trying to update it, but it can't update it because it's trying to save it. So after update is the wrong event to use for this. So I have to hit escape to kind of break out of that loop. Okay, let's go back into our design view. Let's go back to our code, get rid of that. Okay, whoops. And the right event to use for this is before update. All right, the before update fires when you make changes to the form, to the record, but before it's saved to the table. So you can edit that field and then that whole thing gets saved at once. Okay, so go to dot, dot, dot here. And this is where we can put last updated equals now. And before update also has a benefit that you can cancel the event. So you can check for things in here, like did they put in the right kind of data? Is it valid? You can check it against other tables, da 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 and cancel the event and give them an error message. I covered that in my other lessons. All right, save that. Let's come back out here. Now, the one downside to doing this is that you will not see the data be updated here as you're typing it. So if I go to a different record, for example, all right, let's say Deanna gets married and she's now Deanna Riker. Right. Okay, now it doesn't look like it's working, but watch this. As I leave the record, the event actually runs, saves it, and it's stored in there. So that's the one downside to this method is the person editing the record won't see that until they close the form or move to a different record and come back to it. But, you know, that's not that big of a deal. I kind of like it. In fact, you can even hide this field if you want to and just have it like in a manager form or whatever. What I like to do, honestly, is I like to disable this field. I like to gray it out. Open this guy up, because you don't want people tampering with that number, right? Go to data, and then turn enabled to no. Or you can lock it and gray it out, whichever one you want. About the same thing. But now, if you come in here, right, go to customer form. See, it's grayed out. You can't click on it. You can't change it. If I go to someone else, like Will Riker, right, and I put in a phone number in here. Okay, as soon as I leave the record or come back to it, that data gets updated. And now you know when the record was last updated, All right? Pretty cool, huh? Nice and simple. All right, if you wanna learn more, you'll find some links down below. Here's some other related videos. This one I just did recently, it's on graying out fields using that enable property, All right? Very similar to what we just did. If you want to know who made that update instead of just when it was updated, you wanna know who did it. Well, I got another video tracking user log on and log off. You can track in a table who's logged on and you can actually save that username in the table as well. So you could say last updated and then last updated by and put the person's username in there. Getting even more complicated, I have a track changes in data where you can create an actual log table where you can store the time, you know, time and date, who did it and what was changed. This is a little more complicated. So you could track all the changes, creating a log or an audit trail table. And of course, if you want full security for your access database, including user logons, tracking that workflow right with an audit table a system log controlling who has access to do what in the database i got a full security seminar where i show you how to properly lock down your microsoft access databases and keep them fully secure all right you'll find links to all this stuff down below you got to click on a little more if you're watching on youtube you got to click on the little more button right and if you're watching on youtube they do a really good job of hiding it it's right there you click on that more button boom and then you'll see all these extra links and stuff down below down here all right, people always say, where are the links? Well, you gotta click, you gotta find that little more button. YouTube, you gotta make that a little more visible for people, okay? So there's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos one free beginner class each month, and more.
Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any Tech Help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for Tech Help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.